Hi, this is Caroline from The Happy Sensitive. And in this video, I wanted to chat with you about energy. And uh, most places in the world, I think people don't really talk about energy, except maybe California, where people seem to be talking about energy all the time. But I wanted to talk about energy as in kind of the world behind the world that we see, because there is so much going on there. And if you're very sensitive, if you're very sensitive to energy, you probably have an inkling of stuff going on behind the scenes, under the surface, in ways that many people are not aware of and they don't realize. And um, you may get certain vibes from people that you can't explain and you, you're not sure what to make of it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things I've learned. Um, I've been working with highly sensitive people and empaths since 2014. And I thought when I started that you know, helping empaths to stop sponging, which is one of the things I do in my work, uh, I thought that was kind of like done, you know, that topic was kind of done for me and I kind of knew what I needed to know about that. But as I started to work with a lot of empaths, I realized that there are all kinds of ways that people can be sensitive to energy that seem like empath, but it's actually something different. And so I've really been learning about this energy world uh, you know, on an ongoing basis, and I keep learning about it. There's so much going on there. And, you know, we tend to think about people and their emotions as contained within their body. Like, you know, psychologically, we tend to think you have your emotions, they're in your body, that's it. But when you look at people through the lens of energy, then people are not fixed closed containers, you know, like energy, emotional energy, belief energy can leak from them in many different ways. And so when you're very sensitive to that, you can pick up on that. And so the strange thing is that you can have all kinds of energy exchanges happening between people. There are some people who throw their emotions very violently, um, very, very nasty to be around. And, you know, they uh, kind of use their emotional energy as a way to intimidate other people and make those other people you know, back down and feel bad and shrink away, um, which is obviously not how emotions are meant to be processed. It's not what they're for. It's kind of like a food fight, right? Like food is not for throwing, food is for eating, and your emotions are for feeling. They're not for throwing at people, but it's something that some people do. Um, while people are going to physically be in one place, energetically, they can move around. And some people are very good at energetically moving around. And there are also a lot of people who teach this, especially in the spiritual community. But actually, this is not a very healthy thing to do or to learn. I know it sounds really cool, um, this, this whole kind of astral projection kind of thing, astral traveling. But really, people are really into that, are very, tend to be very ungrounded, very out of body, very dissociated and very out of touch with themselves. So the, the weird thing is about this energy world is that there can be all kinds of interactions happening, so behind the scenes. So, you know, one person might be here, another person might be in another country, but energetically they can be having a really intense exchange of ideas and information. Um, or it can be like one person screaming at the other person energetically. So. It's, it's really interesting, but it's also strange to, to notice like how much is going on there, like how intense and how busy that world really is. And also it's really like a, it's like a microcosm and a copy of the physical world in the sense that there are good things happening in there and there are bad things and there are many shades of gray. All right, sometimes people think of energy and spirituality as like it's all good and it's all love and everyone is one and you all want to be connected. But when you start looking at the energy world and what's actually happening there, there are a lot of really unhealthy connections. There are a lot of people who are trying to like be one with someone else by constantly being in their space. Um, there are a lot of things that require um, a kind of subtle... Um, distinction to understand what is what is really happening when you throw it all into one heap and say oh you know being connected is good then you're going to miss a lot of the problems that there are and that are uh, very active in that energy layer of things because it really is like a layer it's like a you've got your everything that's going on physically and everything that you can see 
And then you've got all these energy layers, some of them more obvious, some of them louder, some of them more subtle, and they're interwoven with everything that is going on in our day to day. Day to day. And you might think, well, that's really cool, but how is that relevant for me? But it's relevant because there are a lot of people who are tapped into this in one way or another, some in healthy ways, but a lot of people in very unhealthy ways. And so what can happen is that you have an interaction with somebody that on the surface, what they say and what's, you know, what seems to be happening sounds okay, sounds fine, what they're doing seems okay, but there is a whole other world behind the scenes on the energy level, they're doing a whole other thing and that can create all kinds of strange disconnects and all kinds of strange uh, experiences where you feel like on one level this is good, but on another level there's something really weird going on and what is that? And so this is one of the things I've been looking into over the last years because I keep being confronted with more new phenomena, as in new as I didn't know about it, and then having to you know, understand what it is, understand how to deal with it, understand how to teach people how to deal with this. Um, and interestingly enough, you know, a lot of people who work with energy get kind of obsessed with it. So they become, they want to have like more and more access to more energy and they want to be in the know about other people's stuff and they call that intuition. But really the more I'm learning about this, the more convinced I am that, you know, the most important thing is that you are grounding your body, that you understand yourself, that you're internally connected, internally coherent. That's where your strongest, most important intuition is. And a lot of this kind of um, connecting and seeking and, and intuitively discerning things about other people on the energy plane, very quickly it becomes bad boundaries. Very quickly it becomes enmeshment. Very quickly it becomes unhealthy uh, because it's often a reaction to something that somebody feels they can't control on the physical level, right? So somebody who feels very lonely, for example, on the, on the, on the, on the sorry, <laughs> in their physical reality, um, may actually get very interested in connecting on the energetic level and really reach out to people in that way, get very, very busy interacting with lots of people on the energy level, but uh, in their like physical, visible life, still be very alone. And so then you get this, these two realities, right? Where one is, this is, this is how it is over here. And then behind the scenes, there's a lot going on trying to compensate for what's happening in someone's physical life. But then because there's this compensation, they don't deal with what is going on in the physical life. So one of the things I really, you know, try to do when I'm trying to help someone is trying to understand what is happening on different layers at different levels and why, and uh, how can we kind of bring this back to the here and now and, and get all the complicated energy dynamics, you know, prune them back. Because again, there's this idea that if you're sensitive to energy and that you're, if you're very connected to other people energetically, and you know a lot about these people, that that's some kind of spiritual advancement. But really what I'm finding is that it's just, it's just enmeshment and it's often bad boundaries and it's not wanting to deal with your own stuff, you know? So um, even though I help people a lot with energy and intuition, um, I've also had conversations sometimes with people who came to me that where they say they want to open up their intuition, they want to get access to more of their, of their intuition, but for reasons that were, you know, kind of like running away from their physical life reasons, or just ex exploring for the sake of exploring without any real good foundational reason beneath it. And very often I've, I've told people who came to me with this, I've said, you know, look, I'm actually more the person who kind of takes your intuition away, helps you prune it back and not help and not get more of it. Because to a lot of people being kind of like knowing your way around this energy world and being very intuitive on that level sounds really cool. But the people who actually somehow <laughs> develop those abilities without really understanding how they work and without really understanding how to you know, make it stop, they will tell you that it's really overwhelming. You know, it's kind of like being plugged into energetic social media 24 seven. It's just a lot. And so really to function well, especially as a sensitive person, there's a lot of pruning back. There's a lot of, how do I get out of this? Like, how do I pull back? How do I focus on, you know, what's going on in your own, how do you focus on what's going on in your own body? And I focus on what's going on in my body. You know, we take charge of our own, own realities in that way. We deal with what's going on there. There's plenty going on there and staying out of other people's business because a lot of what is the energy world 
turns into actually a lot of what other people's business is. Um, because if you, if you think about people as containers, this is hard to understand, but if you think about people as kind of permeable containers where things can kind of come in and out, then the energy world is kind of where all of that just comes together. And so it's like, you know, the, the marketplace of, of everybody's energy. And if you're in there a lot, you're going to get confused. You're not going to know what you want. You're not going to know what you need. You're not going to know what's going on with you because there's just so much happening. And this is why it's, you know, this is also why we have bodies. We have these limitations and these boundaries. It's like, this is me, you know, and that is you and those are separate. But there is actually a level where, yeah, things are not that separate. And you, if you're very sensitive to energy, you have to make an effort and learn how to maintain that separation. I know that goes against what 99% of the spiritual teachers are saying, because everyone's about, oh, we all want to be united and connect to everyone and be part of the oneness. But again, a lot of what I'm seeing in practice on that, on that level is, is not healthy oneness, is not healthy connection. Um, it's unhealthy connections. It's, it's needs being met in sneaky ways. There's all kinds of weird interactions and weird things going on on that plane. Um, and really, you know, when I think of oneness, I think of being internally integrated because you have access to what you need access to from the inside out. You don't need to pop out of your body. You don't need to like get all, you know, into this energy soup out there. You just stay in your own body and there in there, you can hear, and you can know what you need to know. And that's enough. Um, okay. So I want to talk about some of the experiences you might have had that have to do with energy from other people. Um, one can be that somebody that you haven't thought of for a long time and you had no reason to think about them at all suddenly pops into your head and you can't get them out of your head and you have no good reason for it. It could be that on the energy planes, there's some kind of connection between the two of you, some kind of interaction and your, your mind is picking up on that and that's why you're suddenly obsessing. Another thing can be when you're around someone and you have this very subtle yet very violent sensation of being punched in the gut and you can't really explain it. It doesn't really make sense, except that you have this vague sensation, this vague sense that, you know, you said or did something that upset the other person and they're not very happy with you. Um, but they didn't say anything to that effect per se, or they didn't do anything to that effect per se. Another sign or indication of, of some kind of energy, activity, it can be from dreams. There's different kinds of dreams. You can have the dreams that are just kind of like processing the day where everything is kind of garbled together. But sometimes you can also have these dreams that are just very, very vivid, way more vivid than regular dreams. And it really feels like something actually happened. You wake up and you feel like something really happened. It wasn't just a dream. Um, of course, you can have that kind of experience if you have a very intense nightmare, but there is a kind, a particular kind of dream where, you know, you actually did have a, some kind of energetic interaction with somebody, um, maybe that you know from this life or you don't know them from this life and you wake up and you, you remember it and, and something really, really happened. Um, those kinds of things are, are, impossible to explain from a psychological perspective because then everything becomes just, oh, it's just symbolic, you know, and it's just the mind processing things and it doesn't really mean anything. Um, but I, I found from, you know, working with a lot of people who are sensitive to energy that you really, you can have these very, very vivid, realistic dreams that really are about an actual interaction with somebody, probably while that other person was also asleep. So these are just some interesting things, interesting things that uh, people experience. Um, what are some more? Yeah, and then you know, another one can be, sometimes you can feel really, really small around someone for no good reason. Now this is tricky because some people get triggered very easily and they very easily feel small around others. Small is another way of saying you feel shame. Um, but there is also an energetic way where you can actually feel small around someone and, um, it may not be because you feel shame. It may be because they are energetically very big and very loud and they're kind of, some people are very dominant in that way and they take up a lot of space and when you're around them and whenever you try to stand up tall and you kind of like try to take up your own space, they, they kind of push back at you. And so you can end up kind of, kind of, you know, and 
automatically, energetically making yourself really small to just kind of fit the space and then feeling kind of weird and feeling, you know, diminished and strange and, and, and kind of just a little bit lost and weak um, as in, in response. And how exactly it feels, I mean, that, that's different for everyone, but there's just a sensation of kind of shrinking and feeling small and powerless and um, just having everything kind of wash over you. There, there can be real things happening on the energetic planes that explain these kinds of things. So what's been really interesting um, for me over the years is also noticing how some phenomena that, yes, they may have just a regular psychological explanation, some of these phenomena also have, uh, in some cases, a very uh, distinct energetic explanation where there are, there are actually energetic um, things happening that if you could see them, if I could show you a movie what's, of what's happening, you would say, oh, it makes perfect sense that I felt this way because something actually happened on the energy planes, right? But it's just because it's invisible and there's no physical person that you can't, your brain can't tell what's happening. And so all you have is these weird symptoms, these weird sensations. And you're like, I'm not really sure, you know, what this is or what this means. And there's a lot, a lot of things like this. Um, if you'd like to learn a little bit more, I have a, uh, I have a few different uh, courses in the Happy Sense of Library about this kind of stuff. And one of them is called the language of energy sensitivity, where I walk you through different kinds of sensitivity to energy, uh, what they're about, what causes them, you know, kind of how they work to kind of give you the lay of the land. And there's also a bunch of resources in there for dealing with, let's say the easier um, energetic situations and, and little problems that you might run into for the complex stuff we need to i need to talk with you we need to figure out what's what and teach you things in person but there are a lot of things that if you kind of know what it is and you know how it works there's there's a lot of things that you can do um, yourself so everything you can do yourself i put that in the happy sensitive library so that's there for you to check out i just want to close with this like if you have you get weird vibes in places. You, you feel you feel something from someone. You can't quite place it, or place it, or you just have a weird reaction that you can't explain. But you really feel like something happened, even though you can't pinpoint what it was, because on the surface everything seemed fine. It could very well be that there was some kind of energetic interaction with somebody that, if you knew what it was, you know, if you actually understood like what happened, it would perfectly explain why you feel the way you feel. All right. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was interesting for you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.